Today we celebrate the solemnity of our Lord Jesus Christ, the King of the universe. And this title of Jesus was given to us in 1925 by Pope Pius, the tw uh, Pius XI, uh, seeing in the wake of World War I, he wanted to establish a universal feast day to uh, uh, remind us, remind the church as the Vicar of Christ, to remind us that Jesus Christ is the sovereign over everything, over everything in our life and in this world and in the whole universe. And what a beautiful gospel we have that was chosen by the church that the crucifixion of Jesus Christ, that there would be those who would sneer at Jesus, those who would jeer at him, those who even crucified next to him would reject him and choose selfishness. But yet, as Archbishop Fulton Sheen said, the second criminal, the one crucified on his right, according to tradition, Dismas, Saint Dismas, is called the good thief because he stole heaven. He stole heaven that day because of his repentance and because of his humility. And this is a great meditation for us, especially as we approach the secular holiday of Thanksgiving, is to recognize that in some instances and in some ways, we all are thieves. We all have stolen something from God. Whether it's our time, whether it's our talents, whether it's our treasure, whether it's taking advantage of things in our marriage, in our vocation, in our priesthood, in our bishopric. Each one of us is a thief, stealing the time away from God, stealing the things that he has given us, and not being grateful for them, not turning to him and saying, Lord, I thank you that you are sovereign, that you are king over this in my life or that in my life. Because it's truly not by our own accord that we are saved. St. Paul just reminded us of that in our, our second reading from Colossians. That Jesus Christ has dominion over everything, over all the principalities and powers, over all the worlds. Jesus Christ is sovereign because by his precious blood from the cross, from that throne of the cross, we are saved. And St. Paul even goes, to, goes so far as to saying that by his precious blood, we will have peace. So what is it in our life that we have stolen from Jesus, that we have stolen from God, that we truly have become a bad thief by saying, you saved others, why don't you save me? If you're the chosen one, if you're really the Christ, come down off that cross, get down because that's not the king I want to serve. For each one of us, maybe we are on the cross like the other thief, and we're crying out to Jesus saying, are you not the Christ? Save us and yourself from this miserable world, this miserable flesh, this miserable devil that keeps persecuting me. No, most of the time, we are not like the good thief, Dismas, who recognizes the condemnation that we have received because of our sins, because I have stolen things from God, because I have stolen things from Christ on the cross, because I've taken advantage of his love and mercy. Most of the time, we don't thank him for that, or we don't claim his authority over me, over my mind, my body, my spirit, my family, my friends, my marriage, my workplace, my vocation, my kids, and everything that it entails, from toys to trucks, from top to bottom, the Lord is sovereign, the Lord is king over everything, even our sins. This is why in the church's tradition, when we have dealt with addictive behaviors or diabolical influence, we claim the authority of Christ over even those sins, even those generational sins, even the propensity that we all have towards sin and death called concupiscence. The Lord has authority over that and can break that if we ask him, if we turn to him saying, Lord, 
remember me when you come into your kingdom. I heard this beautiful story of a farmer who had his donkey fell into a dry well, a very deep dry well. And this farmer decided, you know what? It's too much work and the donkey's not worth it. So he started, he called two of his friends and he started chucking dirt into the well. Shovel by shovel, shovel by shovel, he was trying to bury alive this donkey. But the donkey realizing what was happening, each time a shovel full would come down, he would pack it down, he would stomp. And each time more and more dirt would come, he would take a step up. More and more dirt filled that dry well until one time, close to the evening, the donkey just stepped out of the well. This is an analogy for the world, the flesh, and the devil that try to bury us. When we are condemned, when we have been writ written off, when they don't care about us anymore, even when we're on the cross, if we just shake off the dirt, take a step up, tamp it down, stand, not lay down, if we stand, we will be saved through Christ who saves us. This is such a great analogy because sometimes, sometimes, our freedom is as simple as saying, I'm sorry to our husband, our wife, our kids, our boss, our coworker. Sometimes it's giving forgiveness when they don't say that they're sorry. Sometimes it means standing up and proclaiming Christ by doing my job well, by coming home to be with my kids, by taking care of my kids, by teaching them that Christ is sovereign in their life, that he is the king of everything, including the entertainment that we let into our home, including the life we live, including the places that we go, that Jesus Christ, through prayer, can be king of going to Blaze Pizza or going to Chick-fil-A, going on a mission. Our mission, our vocation, truly has Christ as our king. And sometimes it just means standing up and stepping up. Sometimes. Sometimes it means putting down our sword and surrendering ourselves to Jesus when the world, the flesh, and the devil are overwhelming us, it means running to him more readily. It means recognizing the condemnation of this world and saying, Lord, you have made me for yourself and my heart is restless until it rests in thee. I will not give up because your authority is in me. And as St. Paul reminds us in his beautiful letters, he who lives in us is greater than he who lives in the world. We truly have the sovereignty of Christ in us. His body, blood, soul, and divinity live in me and in you. Not only by our baptism, but by the Holy Communion we will receive. Do we even steal that and run back to our busyness of the world? Run back to Hobby Lobby to get the newest Christmas decorations? Because God knows you need it to impress your aunts and your uncles and your sisters and your brothers and everybody. But if you have more Hobby Lobby decorations than you do have crucifixes or images of, our G of Jesus, our Lord and Savior, King of the universe, there's a big problem. It's a big problem. The Lord is King of our lives. It means that he reigns in me and in you. It means that truly we have to call out to him when we are overwhelmed, when everybody else is complaining, when everybody else has condemned this world. We know that Christ hasn't given up on us, that the love and mercy of God endure forever, that that love and mercy of God is truly accessible through that door to my right. And there's four of them. So there's plenty of room. Jesus can give us freedom 
And we don't want to get into the cult of personality looking for healers and mystics and people out in the world who are going to tell us what's going to happen so I can be a prepper, so that I can get things ready, so that I can make sure that everything's controllable in my environment. Or the cult of personality to tell you that I'll be the one. Father Andy will be the one to save you from your sins. Father Andy will be the one to make you free. Father Andy will be the one to teach you. Never from that pulpit has that word come out of any of us. We have always proclaimed Christ and Christ crucified. And I promise you, through the grace of the Holy Spirit and Father Rosan's intercession, it never will. We always proclaim Jesus Christ. We always proclaim him as king. We will always proclaim it until the end of time because it's a duty given to us. It's an obligation, as St. Paul says, to preachers of the word, popes, bishops, deacons, priests. They must proclaim Christ crucified and they must proclaim his kingship over this whole world and this whole universe. The Lord is still working despite what people are telling you. The Lord is victorious despite what people are telling you. The Lord is still king. We even have a beautiful reminder of that in St. Jose Sanchez del Rio over here, this statue. His last words were, Viva Cristo Rey. Even in the midst of his suffering on the cross, having his feet filleted, he said, if my voice goes out and I can't proclaim Jesus Christ crucified, know that my breath is proclaiming. Long live Jesus Christ. Viva Cristo Rey. It's the whole reason we put him up here. <laughs> or Father David really put it up here. I, 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 didn't, I didn't have anything to do with it, but... The point is, is that the Lord is working. The Lord truly, he is the Christ. He is the true son of God. He is true king. And so we ask him, as he has asked us to do this, the holy sacrifice of the mass is done in remembrance of him. Do this in memory of me. Take this cup. Take this bread. Do this in memory of me. He has commanded us to eat his flesh, drink his blood, so that we might have life, so that we might be free, so that his kingship might permeate all of my life, my body, my mind, my spirit, my soul. And we ask in return, as the good thief, as the one who stole heaven, the thief who did the right thing when he was put to the test. We asked Jesus, Jesus, remember me, remember us, when you come into your kingdom. In your second coming, remember me, because I remembered you, because I re was reminded that you were king of my life, and I sought your forgiveness and freedom through your precious blood. So as we receive Jesus today, let that be our anthem. Let it be the cry of our heart from the depths of our being. Jesus, you are Lord, you are King. You are truly, truly the Lord of my life and King of the universe. How beautiful this day is and how beautiful the good things and the beautiful manifold gifts that the King wants to bestow on us, his beautiful sons and daughters.